Hey guys, we're here at the Zill Vardos Tiny House Workshop in Olympia, Washington, and we're gonna go take a tour with the owner and builder, Abel. Let's go check it out. We've been building things for many, many, many years. My family built a house uh, when I was a kid, so I, I got to see a lot of things happen. And I started a book project as my senior project in college, and it became apparent that that wasn't going to become what it was. Um, I was a little over enthusiastic about choosing the size of it. And so I took the pieces and parts of my project and I built a tiny house out of some of it and a bunch of other things that I found. That was my first tiny house. That was about six years ago. I have been in business five years. I want to create houses that kind of fit the human body well and that feel natural and almost nostalgic to be in even if they're brand new. And that's one of the like little ideas that kind of drives what I do. The shaped roofs are one that I seem to be known for. I do it almost every house. Everybody asks for the round moon window. We build a few of those. I say we. I have three fantastic carpenters and then two other people that provide support around here, so it's not just me anymore. I've got partially built a uh, window. Um, I used to build these by hand in the house itself. I'd put blocking in the walls and bend the plywood in and wrestle with it and curse a little bit. Um, but we just recently built a, a, a large jig um, so we can build these on the jig and they come out much more accurate. And there you have it. That's the classic Zill Moon window. This is a design by my friend Aaron um, up in North Bend, Washington. He's an amazing like, robotic scientist, um, but he started a small CNC company, um, and so I got this from him. Um, but it kind of works this way. You know, we uh, make our designs, uh, this is an AutoCAD derivation, um, and uh, we can create the whole house in here. This is some, some of these take 50, 80 hours to, to, to do. Um, once we do them, we create a, kind of a recipe for this machine to follow because it doesn't know what to do with the shapes. And um, we use this to control what that does. Um, so um, it's all, it's basically a robot um, and there's kind of a fancy router that uh, cuts the wood and we use these beautiful solid uh, carbide bits. Um, so it's a little expensive, but it kind of starts to pay for itself before very long. When it comes to s the tools that I, I think facilitate the artistic and like creative process in building, um, I'm kind of a sucker for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is called the Little Bird House. There's a finished one down in Portland, um, but I've gotten some more requests, so I'm building another one right here. The bathroom is here. Um, this one has a flush toilet and uh, a shower stall. Um, it's a little bathroom, it's like 44 by 6 feet um, with a pocket door. Uh, and then, and this is a very similar layout to the original Little Bird. Um, the kitchen uh, has an L-shaped counter. Um, in this case, there's a, a range with an oven down here, a sink, and a, an under-counter fridge. Oh, it's very simple. She, she says, I have a, an upright piano and I want a place that it fits in. So this, this between these two tall windows um, is enough room for an upright piano. Excellent. <laughs> um, and then there will be a, a cabinet over here. There will actually be a, a washer-dryer combo in the bottom of that. Um, it will have enough room for other stuff. And a very small wood stove um, right here. It's a British stove called a salamander. Mm -hmm. um, really wonderful little thing. And those littler ones are nice because they don't overheat a tiny house. So there will be a queen-size bed platform right here. Uh, and there's be some storage underneath. It'll be about 30, maybe 28 inches off the ground. This particular design has a, the, the curved dormer, so you can see where it is going to go. And this one has a, a steel roof, actually. Um, and I, I source and 
design and fit the metal myself. So it's kind of a custom steel roof. Excellent. Welcome to the Dewdrop House. This is a new uh, new design by me um, for uh, somebody that lives up in Seattle, Washington. It's almost done, actually. Um, we're just uh, maybe a week and a half off from finishing it. Um, here are two of my fabulous carpenters um, <laughs> at work on the doors that will go in the other house. Um, this is Curtis and Penelope. Thanks, guys. And this is the door that's going here on the Dewdrop? Yeah, yeah, this is the door. Um, again, this is my design. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a laminated uh, structure. They're pretty heavy. They can be 95 pounds. With the glass in it, it might be more than that. Is it similar to the pinafore door? It is really similar. And I did an arch top door in my first tiny house okay. as well. It seems like each time I get to do a little different variant. This one has a brown window, um, then diamond shaped windows, and triangle right. shaped windows. And <laughs> Every shape out there. <laughs> yeah. This one will have a stock tub, uh, which is something I've done many times before, um, like a you know stock tub you get from a farm store, but I you know cut holes in it and plumb it as a bathtub. And then um, she's going to use a, a nature's head composting toilet, which is actually one that I, I really highly recommend. I also build my own bucket toilets for some people, but uh, the, the nature's head's a fabulous build. Um, I think you guys have one. We do. <laughs> This is the first tiny house on wheels that I built. Um, and, and honestly, I did this because uh, I was inspired by Dee Williams, who also has a tiny house in Olympia. I used to walk by hers when I was walking back and forth from my house to the co-op, um, pushing my baby girl in a stroller. And um, I just finished my motivation for finishing the boat building project and decided I was gonna take it apart. And I thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think this idea will work for me. Um, I was renting at the time and I loved to build things. Um, and I didn't want to build something and leave it behind when I left. So I thought this is, this is what I'm going to do. I can live in it with my daughter. Um, so here's my first tiny house. So I, I see there's actually three doors here. Actually four doors on this tiny house. Can yes. you tell me why? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was kind of an experiment. You know, this, this, is, this one's different from the houses that I typically build for other people. So I, of course, the builder's own house is uh, a conglomeration of found items, and um, which some of these doors were. And, um, but it was also an experiment to free up space inside by not having pass-throughs to the other parts of the house that could be external. So um, this one houses the uh, composting toilet. It's a, like a bucket style composting toilet. Um, you can open up and um, there's like a place for sawdust. Um, and, uh, and then here I actually have a um, washing machine. Um, um, this door is a found item, so it's obviously seen some weather and um, I plan to build a replacement for it soon, but that's what houses are all about, is maintenance. Um, and this one's been around for six years, so. Uh, and this is a door that houses uh, the propane and a hot water heater. Uh, it's a really wonderful Bosch unit um, and uh, just storage for odds and ends. And then this is the, this is the front door, this is the first arch shop door that I built um, and uh, there's a reclaimed handle that I found in like a 25 cent bin. I bent one part back and it, it uh, turned out to be a really beautiful piece. Um, this house is full of found items, um, found wood, um, odds and ends left over from my boat building project. All the rafters in this house are made of a marine plywood that I had bought for the boat building project. Oh wow. I'd love to take you guys inside but the there's somebody living in this right now and um, we'll have to do that another time. We'll come back for that one. <laughs> this is version one of the, um, the moon window. I like your trim work too. You do a lot of this whimsical line. I think the reason that I do shaped trim is because I can't really find a good reason not to. Mm -hmm. Like I could clap a straight board on the side of a house. Um, it would be faster, but I, it just, it's maybe not my calling in life to always do the easiest path. Yeah, you like to challenge yourself? <laughs> Much to my own chagrin, I, I do not take the easiest path. Um, more, um, these are dumpster windows that I restored. Um, they're actually nearing the end of their uh, functional lifespan. They're pretty old and they're a little rickety from the get-go, so I may uh, build some new sashes myself. Does this tiny house have a name? Uh, 
Yes, uh, this one uh, kind of got named the Azavela, which is the name of a boat in a short story that I wrote uh, some years ago. Um, it was a boat designed by an old lady. I, <laughs> um, it means something like blue wind. Mm -hmm. um, but um, this also gets called the the tiny house or the gypsy house. It's the um, original. Does it have a special place in your heart because it's the first one you ever made? Yeah, it really does. Um, and it's been on many adventures with me. I've lived in it. My dad's stayed in it when he comes up to visit because he's retired now. And, and then in the last few years, several of my really wonderful acquaintances and friends have had it be their home for periods of time. Ha, ha, ha.